Good morning slash afternoon, all my woods people. We are doing another episode of the Mascot Challenge, and we are headed to the Davy Crockett National Forest. Our buddy Derek sent us a map dot that we're going to go check out down here. And we're probably going to do a little scouting around and try to avoid some floodwaters and find some good deer sign and all kinds of cool places down here. Uh, this dot he sent us is a pretty cool looking spot for the map. It's where a couple different terrain features and habitat features meet. We got a really hard edge. It's near a creek, which is always great whenever you're trying to find whitetails in an unknown place. Find the creeks is kind of the first thing to do. And uh, there's also a good clear cut kind of near there. So really excited to get down here and check this out. It's in a little bit different type of terrain than what we hunt, but kind of similar still. I mean, we're still in East Texas, uh, but it's a big, big chunk of land. So that means that there's a lot of area for a lot of deer to roam around. Hopefully there's a few deer around where we're headed today and uh, we're gonna find some awesome sign in there. Why, because the loudest snack in the woods. That's right, it's the loudest <laughs> snack in the woods. Somebody threw it down. But they ain't took even in three miles of this right now. <laughs> you don't think? I don't. <laughs> Definitely ain't after that really realistic sound. <laughs> We're going Shakira hunting out here. This is Turtle Man. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do, we're walking into a big block of National Forest. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my public land map layer because anywhere we're on this side of the highway right here is gonna be public land. So make it where we can see better. I'm going to center us and then map tools, add waypoint. Mark this as the truck. Yep. Shows that we're a little bit off of where that trail is, but that's fine. I don't really care. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go to this waypoint that Derek sent us. Go to waypoint. 576 yards away. That's not too far of a walk. Um, but far enough, probably, to get us away from folks. And we got a good habitat line right there of like see there's some younger pines to some older growth forest or some pines to oaks or something there's a clearing in between here and there and maybe you might even have to walk through a pond or something we don't know what that is for sure but right here where we're at actually looks a lot different than it does on the map um, let's see how do we do this we're gonna take a picture Maybe. There you go. Add photo. I'm going to take a photo. Because they actually clear cut this thing. So that's now added. There's a clear cut, but it stops back here about another 200 yards right in there. We're going to check out that waypoint. Look at here, the second Kit Kat of the day. <laughs> Boy, he made a hundred yards before he opened his other Kit Kat. Mm. Maybe that's where Mr. Kit Kat goes to his tree stand. <laughs> that bush right there lets you know there are big deer around. Big snakes. <laughs> that's right. If you see those, you know that there's some timber rattlers. Tyler's favorites. I guess we go down this more dim one right here. A tiny track. Tiny deer. You weren't wrong about more deer down this trail. Stick it in the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. Yet. 
somebody's deer hunt spot. See a deer stand? A lawn chair over there on the edge. <clears throat> I wonder if that's our Kit Kat, man. Might be. Yeah, well, wouldn't you know. There's a deer track in it right there. I mean, it doesn't look like it's been real long since they've been scraping on this thing. In fact, look at that right there, since the rain. What's today, the 29th of February? Mm-hmm, it's a leap year, leap yeah, day. That's why they're all thrown off. So February scrapage. You just saw a deer? Yeah. I was just talking about how We've got hardwoods right in here. And obviously a little little pine thicket. The canopy's kind of open right in here. So it's a little diversity, which is canopy's what we're looking for in this situation. Canopy's open. Okay, so we actually ended up a little bit west of our map dot. It's actually over here. But that's okay, because we were trying to hook around this little young pine thicket. And I saw a deer up on the hill. Let's see, I'm facing that way. That deer would have been somewhere up in there like it was a doe i don't know Let's see that but then found a rub right here where i'm standing right on the edge of this little pine thicket i mean a lot like you would think a buck would do when he's cruising you know just kind of cruise the edge of a thicket smelling of it i want to take a picture of it just to record that right there for our records Now what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna hook around this pine thicket and go to the exact map dot that Derek sent us and then check things out from there. Possible chunk of hunter's tape right there. There's a bunch, this is probably forester's tape, but we hadn't seen any orange forester's tape yet. Okay, so we're pretty close to the map dot here, uh, 73 feet away. It's actually right across on the other side of this little pine thicket here, but just to uh, save us a few back steps, we're just gonna stay on this side of the pine thicket. But this is really where I would uh, kind of start contemplating hunting, probably right here. I wouldn't, I don't know. There was a chair up there on that clearing that a guy was sitting in hunting that area up there. That just seems like there's a little bit of hunting pressure, but Derek sent us a really good spot, honestly. Like, I did not expect it to look this good back here. That's what it does, uh, you know, just from looking at the aerial map and whatnot. I just think with this creek being right here, like 50 yards, and then, well, there's a lot of sunlight getting to the forest floor in here, so it makes it where it's real thick. You know, you can see these really young pines growing up, so it's gonna be really good cover. This isn't food, right but it is at least cover which is one of the necessities for deer then if you see like this tree here's an oak tree the one tyler's leaning on right here is an oak tree like you got oaks for food in the fall in fact that's a willow oak these are posts i saw a red oak or a um, texas red oak uh, leaf will ago so you got a variety of oaks through here so there's going to be acorns in the ground at different times of the year then you mix in all the understory brows like everything you see in here that's not a little pine tree is either like that thing right there which is a young sweet gum or american beauty berry which are all going to be things woody brows that deer really like to eat on throughout the year those american beauty berries they're, they'll eat the leaves all year long and then this time of year they'll be in here eating the woody brows and eating the buds off of these sweet gums so a really good place for big timber right because it's not big timber like the rest of the area around it we just saw that deer Right up the hill right up there i can only assume it was bedded in something similar to what we're sitting in right here maybe with its back up against one of these thickets now take this to a hunting application maybe you've got does that are bedded real close to that open area in this pine thicket here or here and you've got a good strong northeast south whatever just set up on the downwind side of one of these thickets near this creek and you can almost bet that it's one of the best inferences you can make to at least have a buck walk by you. And I'm, now I'm ready to kind of get out and explore a little bit more and see what this creek's all about. Took a little side trail off the creek right here. 
happens to be exactly where KC had guessed that the deer was that he saw. But, I mean, right on the trail, head high kind of thing here. Bunch of fresh tracks in it. So, kind of heading back up this way, which is actually in the direction of that like juvenile pine cut that's over there, which is the reason we're getting all these this thick stuff here is because the sun is coming in over here over the top of these pines facing into another different cut here of much more mature timber and it's allowing a lot of this stuff right in here to get a lot of sunlight so it's like this the stuff that would be on the north side of a less mature pine thicket would possibly be something you could relate to the rest of the map as being thick and grown up and possible brows and oak trees and that kind of thing All right, so we want to set this camera to point at that scrape, but also get all these different trails coming into it here. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to press the button twice. I'm facing northeast, which isn't perfect, but it'll work. You just don't want that camera facing in any type of southerly direction because that bright sunshine is going to get on this lens right here and just cause you a huge glare, especially in the morning and facing it east, you know, west would be the afternoon. But uh, it should be okay right here. We might get a little bit of sun glare every once in a while or something, but for the most part, this will be a, a decent direction to set it. Now let's just make sure it's pointing down far enough. So one of these things I really like about these lift twos is that I do have this LCD screen here. And uh, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to look at the deer on your camera as opposed to having to pull the SD card out or whatever. But like the big help that it is, is for setting the trail camera. Because right now, as it hangs on the tree, I'm getting, seven eighths sky and one eighth dirt and that's not really where you want to be you want to be more pointed down like one third sky and now we twist it around the tree so okay screen's definitely coming into play all right yeah that's pretty that's center on the scrape right there that scrapes right there in the picture so we catch anything walking through this gap going to the scrape or any of those two trails there's a trail coming in this direction a trail coming in right here and one between those two pines so I like doing that that way I can remember what the tree looks like because we hang so many of these cameras sometimes you forget you walk in there like where's my camera you forget if you hung it up high pointing down or what but that way we know on that one where it's at by George we found us a creek crossing can you believe it? We've got we've got deer sign. Uh, we just found a scrape rub combo right there on a little piece of looks like privet. Uh, highly invasive. And there's a really good creek crossing right here. Tyler asked, he's like, why is this here? Like, what's the point? And said, so, well, it looks like there's a creek crossing over there. We walked over here, sure enough, there's some really good tracks on this crossing heading up to the other side of the creek. And this is about the only place that we found, you know, uh, intersectional movement to the creek. So. Uh, we're going to walk and actually cross here where these deer did and then go see what's happening over there. So we've been pretty excited about the deer sign we found and then this is just something else to get more excited about. You can look at hogs as a nuisance, as an invasive species and as a detriment to other wild animals and they can be all those things. Or you can just be positive about it and say, hey, that's more targets for me in the woods. Well, this right here tells me that hogs spend a lot of time here. This is a pine tree that's as big around, bigger around than your thigh. Well, depending on who you are, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, there's a spring coming out of side of this hill right here, right down in the creek. There's hog sign all through here where they've been wallowing. And what they do is they get all that mud on them, and then they go to these pine trees because the sap is in here, and they love rubbing on that sap. And they just rub and rub and rub. And what they're doing is it's not that they're just big, nasty hogs, but 
they actually get lice real bad throughout the winter. So they'll go down here, wall around in this mud, that mud will dry out on their bodies and then they'll come up here on this tree and rub all that mud off and it'll pull those lice and those lice eggs off of the pigs. So you might be thinking, KC, now you now have lice. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about a louse is that uh, they're species specific. So there's hog lice, there's bird lice, there's human lice. Uh, there's not like, they don't transmit between species. So not too worried about it. But that's a big, big, big hog rubbing tree. That's kind of cool. The okay. ring around the that's whole true. tree. The muddy ring around the bottom. says and then you may have my ear down to it. <laughs> well we found quite a good bit of stuff here uh, good sign good thoughts good ideas I think this is definitely a spot you come in here and hunt and kill deer so um, we're not gonna go too much farther down the creek we're gonna actually head back get in a truck maybe grab some lunch and go uh, to another spot here in the National Forest and see how it compares uh, just give you some options if you were to come down here uh, and some different kind of habitat hopefully so we're heading out We saw a bunch of scrapes on this thing We're talking about how like you kind of wish you had a trail camera here or whatever But a couple things that I wanted to note from this deal is that a I think anybody can look at the map and see that you can come to this So there's probably a decent amount of hunting pressure and B it's probably a lot of nighttime activity. I think that's the thing where we get duped a lot of times is public land hunters who are hitting a spot and kind of scouting as you go and setting up. Like, it didn't matter how much deer sign there is, if it's not in the daytime, you can't shoot them. So uh, I think that we made a good move today by pushing back in along that creek, kind of along the thicket, because I think that that's where you're gonna find deer in the daylight hours. Out here, yeah, you'll probably get some sick footage on trail camera of some deer at night, but does that mean that you're gonna be able to shoot them? Probably not, so. And you might get that trail camera stolen. Yeah, yeah, oh boy, might be like, oh, that's a nice trail camera you got there. But good thing them Exodus has got that security code feature, so it'd be useless to him. But uh, it still uh, wouldn't be fun to have to deal with that whole ordeal. Whoa. All right, we're feeling the uh, post-lunch blues nap time thing that's going on right now. But uh, we're making our way down this old forest road here. Um, we decided since we were in the area that we wouldn't just go to one spot. We we're going to try to hit a couple spots and just make sure that we give a look at the area as much as possible. Uh, this place is not super close to home, so we can't just go everywhere. But we did pick a spot here. Uh, the Natchez is flooded pretty pretty heavily right now so I looked at some ridges that uh, dropped down into the river system there and found a spot and we're gonna go see what's up with it um, it's a really pretty day and we saw deer when we first pulled into our parking spot back there so who knows we might have some good luck here in a second Tyler is right. <laughs> we are pretty close to his spot there on that ridge. You can see the ridge up behind us. And uh, the water line is literally 15 yards and five yards away right here is a rub. So his proposal worked. We had to walk through a little bit of a thicket to get right here, but you can see that there's a real good ridge right up here. A lot of thick stuff in here and uh, a rub right there. So you can definitely see where deer might kind of hook the point of this ridge and cruise the bottom side of it or even bed up up top that ridge and uh, look down this direction. So it worked. Tyler put a dot on the map. When we went here, found a rub. That down tree pinches everything down into a 15 yard area right here. And right there, you've got a super thick thicket 
of new growth pines. So everything that doesn't walk over the top of the ridge line has to walk right here. Make a really good hunt spot. And in fact, we're gonna mark that on the map too. Another rub, this one's a pretty good one. Time close here. That's fresh, isn't it? That pine tree's not even dead. Okay, so walked just a little bit further down and we found two trees that have these giant acorn caps on them and big serrated rounded leaves which i think are a swamp white oak or a swamp chestnut i'm not sure either way i think it's something definitely to note for deer i mean we're trying to figure out the reason as to why there's so many rubs and scrapes and everything right in this area and there wasn't just on the other side of the ridge maybe it's human activity i don't know but i can see these trees being a huge draw in the early fall or even on into the rut i don't really know when these fall i need to do some research on that but I'm gonna mark this tree on the map at waypoint. We're gonna mark it as a food source. There's a bunch of these beads falling. And apparently, we haven't found any that are like decomposing. They were all pretty good, apparently. Yeah, like there's no acorns. Right. They're all gone. Some ate them. Got them two chairs in there, they're ready to go. And a Fiji point bottle. Natural light, bud light. Topographos, Topo Chicos. Right. <laughs> Since National Pride is at an all time high right now, we decided to go visit a national forest for yeah. this here Map Scout Challenge. Yeah, it's a uh, prideful Map Scout <laughs> Challenge for sure. Uh, there were a few things that we noticed, but we are familiar with East Texas, so there were not a whole lot of surprising things. KC, what did you notice? Uh, I noticed that there was a high amount of hunter pressure yep. out there, and that being East Texas, there's going to be some seasonal deer movement. Yeah, and I think uh, part of that seasonal deer movement would be like timber harvest being an important thing for you to note as a hunter uh, so that you can kill a deer. And then also that a buck is going to have like a high amount of travel time in its daily routine. So with that said, let's talk a little bit more in depth about these points. Okay, so the hunter pressure one is really, really one that you can probably kind of understand if you've hunted much public land at all but there's really an interesting dynamic that happens with east texas you have these places all around these wmas or these national forests like this where guys can drive in take a road and then disperse a quarter mile each direction and go hunting uh where we hung the cameras on this place was not super far off of a road however it was far off the main road mm -hmm. but uh you could still drive or easily walk to the general area where these cameras were it looked like a really great hunting spot and there was buck sign we, we yeah. found a lot of scrapes actually mm -hmm. um and hung a camera on a scrape but didn't get any bucks on camera and i think that's what you're going to find with heavy hunting pressure on public land like that it's one of those situations where i mean a one-year-old or a two-year-old might be a pretty good deer in that area you might have to push in deeper to find bucks yeah and that kind of brings it, it goes right into my point here with the high amount of travel time involved in a buck's daily routine um, the reason that I think that they do that is because they're going from spot to spot that is good habitat to good habitat and in between tends to be a lot of pines pine needles underneath right and not a whole lot of brows and other things so they're finding these pockets and that's where the deer live right and so therefore these bucks are having to travel in between and they're leaving signs they're leaving scrapes and that kind of thing uh, rubs and, and all those mm -hmm. different things you know tracks trails obviously and so like where we were at it looked good um, and we were on a scrape 
we're also in a bad like transition period where like we're coming up on March mm -hmm. and when the deer start to shed their antlers it's weird they just disappear when they shed kind of like when they shed their velvet in the early season so uh, with that I think you just got to focus a little more on the pockets of good uh, habitat essentially yeah and what you're gonna find when you're looking at those habitat pockets is those are ever-changing and my other big takeaway is that there's gonna be seasonal deer movement where you're gonna have um, or Let's just say down there, there's no agriculture to speak of. I mean, you have the timber harvest, right? But outside of that, there's no like soybeans, cotton, alfalfa, whatever the deer are gonna eat. There's none of that, right? So those deer are going to be targeting natural food sources throughout the year. Well, as the seasons change, all those food sources change. So you might end up having persimmons falling over here in late October. There might be acorns falling in late September over you know two miles from there. And then there might be some red oaks that are falling in late December, like some nut alls or something. So you're gonna have deer popping all over, heading all different directions to find a place to eat and live. For sure, and another thing that's gonna change those habits are, uh, from season to season, but even more from year to year, is gonna be the timber harvest that they do on national forest lands a lot of times. So you're gonna have, with pine, in pine country like this, you're gonna have people coming in and logging, uh, making lumber essentially mm -hmm. out of this stuff. And so they're, they're doing this in oh, maybe like a checkerboard, for lack of a better term. And so you'll have pines that may be 20, 30, 50 years old, and then you'll have some that are five years old or 10 years old. And so with that, depending on you know what time of year it is and how the sun is be able to shine down into the forest floor because of harvest, you may experience more um, undergrowth, which is browse for deer, right? And, and then also bedding for deer as well. So that's one thing we noticed in this episode, especially as we were down there uh, scouting, that there was different kinds of habitat in there depending on the, the harvest of the timber. So with that said, map scouting is important and sometimes you can see that from a map but when it's been hit in the last few years depending on when maps have been updated and that kind of thing you made it to just go in there and get dirt under your boots and actually see this stuff so with that said we've got our points now we're going to go to the map and see how this kind of uh, allocates to different areas here okay so davy crockett national forest is a giant piece of property giant, huge giant huge <laughs> uh it's hard to click on here and see, but I mean, like even this small thing right here, small, is 1,800 acres. So you yeah. can imagine, I mean, we're looking at like 100,000 acres probably or mm -hmm. something. I don't really know for sure how many are in there. We can look it up later. You look it up. Um, let us know how big it is in the comments because we yeah. don't know. But we really concentrated on a small portion because we were sent map dots here. Um, and it was a really cool map dot. Yeah. Uh, parked the truck there, of course. Um, went in and hung cameras here on this creek system hung a camera there and right there and this was um, the original map dot right yes that's okay. the original map dot right there just kind of to the north of this small clear cut there's another clear cut there you can see and we hung cameras here along the creek and got deer movement and i feel like if you dedicated your hunting season like if you're just kind of a a local guy or a guy who decided that's where you wanted to hunt you can go there hunt that area or this whole area here for a season and probably shoot a deer. Yeah, and there was deer around. Doe, there were lots of doe, doe daytime pictures, you know. Yeah. So uh, we just didn't see many bucks. That's mm -hmm. the, that was kind of the issue. And, and like I said earlier, I think that transition period coming into March was uh, a tough period for our cameras to sit there and soak over a scrape and a couple other trails and that kind of thing. But um, you know, I do also think that a lot of that sign is laid down at night up in that area. Like you said, it's close to a road. Yeah. So so from that conclusion and well let's discuss this too we also while we were there decided to go explore along the river here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and we really liked what we found down in yes. here there's a lot of good oaks the water was high lots of it was flooding at that point in time river was out of its bank so we really couldn't get down you know the river follows the edge of the property there and you can see how far over our map dots go that's as far to the east as we can get mm -hmm. but just on this little ridge right here we found all kinds of deer sign down here along the bottoms lots of different varieties of oaks with swamp white oaks um, I think sw even swamp chestnut oaks uh, you know some traditional Texas reds post oaks all kinds of stuff so a lot of food but yet again still hunter pressure you can see that ground blind right there not far from the road so that's kind of a motif close to roads you're gonna find hunting pressure. In fact, if you're trying public land for the first time ever, that's the way it's gonna be anywhere you go, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in the most remote part of the US, 
close to the road is going to have the most pressure. It's relative, but it's still going to have the most. Sure. Yeah. And so um, with that, you know, like I can take what we saw there. We actually saw a deer coming in right there. Uh, I think as soon as we like shut the truck off or right there before we did, oh, yeah, we yeah, saw yeah, a deer yeah. in there. So mm -hmm. um, there's definitely deer in there and it looked good. There's lots of rubs actually right in there. And mm -hmm. like Casey has marked there, there's food source as well. So from that, I can take and kind of take us to a spot here that's much further north, which will be closer to home for us. And and look at this and say, man, this is similar. Um, it's a, a part of the big Natchez River system here. And there, I think this particular property is called the Big Slough Wilderness. So with this this is this spot's far in and this is what you know this is, is far in. what you're going to need to do if you want to get into deer or if you want to get into bucks i think so let's look at the line distance here um we're going to need to move this map over just a little bit uh, and this is just a particular um like this is a general area but it's not very wide right here what i'm looking at but there's a little knob here and a ridge you can see mm -hmm. and we'll zoom in on that in just a second but like if you were going to go just straight line in from a road what does this green line mean that's a trail okay there's a trail there and so, that means the severity of the incline of the trail and being that this is in southeast texas and the elevation is 200 foot probably not very severe <laughs> yeah i'm thinking it's like Woo! extra green you know yeah yeah that's a long way in there <laughs> yeah so you know from the road it's a mile and a half um guys are doing that you know no doubt um so if you want to try to trek in there and do this thing what you've got here is this river system like i said and you've got this elevation along this southern part in this you know southern in this public um area right here you've got these little ridges right but up here it kind of flattens out and this mm -hmm. is where the slough starts and so you can see the actual slough up here where it's Ooh. real nasty right that is nasty and so i'm looking at this like you know here's a creek horn right here and we've got a video check that out um but the the creek horns are a good thing to look at or, or this is actually a river horn you know so where it juts out really far as compared to the rest of this stuff you're gonna it's gonna be somewhat of a pinch you know mm -hmm. it's still kind of a dma um anyway so this one looks like you know a good spot but you've got so much slew up here i think that you're going to run into trouble with deer actually wanting to travel past you right here they might kind of drift this way to the west if they're going to travel up further north so i thought well let's move down here and look and i think with this elevation right in here and this other big creek horn right here i think you're going to have deer coming up from this stuff uh, all this intermittent uh, you know probably coastal Bermuda pastures and that kind of thing that um, people are grazing cattle on, all this private stuff down here. And they're just gonna move through, right in through here and along this creek system, river system. And depending on, you know, if the water's up like it was when we were there, you know, you'll have to, I can imagine that if the water's up like it was when we were there, it'll be up to these ridges. So mm -hmm. that would really pinch stuff down around the top of these ridges right in here, I'm sure. So yeah. anyway, kind of a cool spot. Uh, it's a uh, all or nothing deal if you haven't uh, pre-scouted it, but being that it's a mile and a half in, I think you could rely on, uh, during the rut, seeing probably some deer moving up and down this system right here. I mean, it is the map scout challenge. That's right. You're supposed to be able to map it out and go kill map them, Map right? it and go kill That's them, That's right. So, <laughs> it's a good looking spot. Thanks. I like it a lot. I didn't venture that far north. I actually, I really liked that spot we went to down by the river. Um, so, I started looking just a little bit further north, and I like these little things like this. And mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe guys see this on the map a lot too, and they're like, I gotta go get to that spot, <laughs> you know? And, and so maybe it's not a secret place, but I'm not saying go back here to the furthest little spot, but I did find it interesting that if you zoom in right here along the river, there is an oxbow, an mm -hmm. old oxbow right there. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it might even go right there along this Hackberry Creek. Maybe there's a creek crossing right here along the creek or something. But it looks like to me that there's going to be kind of a deer travel area mm -hmm. somewhere through here and then the same thing here. This for sure is a riverbed. This is an oxbow. It's probably going to hold water. I mean, you might have a situation where you're pinching deer down real hard. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to have to watch the public-private boundary. There may or may not be a fence right here. It doesn't look like there's going to be a fence, but you never know. Um, so you really need to watch out where you're hunting, you know, uh, be on your onyx and make sure you're in the right spot. But still, there's a lot of, or not a lot of ground to cover right mm -hmm. there. You know, like what's that distance? Um, from that oxbow to the river, 145 yards. You know, you can probably find two or three trails right in there. And depending on the wind, know exactly which thing to hunt on right there to go find and kill bucks. And I think that's going to be really a rut type stand. Um, it also might be a situation where 
uh, I, you know, this is real flat on the private up here. This sounds kind of weird, but if you catch it when the water's rising, you might be trying to hunt deer that are fleeing rising mm -hmm. water. Sure. You know, it's it, it's a weird thing to think about, but that's a, it could be true, right? Mm -hmm. uh, also, be careful because you might not be able to get down out of your tree stand because <laughs> there's water at the bottom of it. Yeah. But uh, just some thoughts. It's it's a neat kind of secluded thing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, maybe you guys are looking at the map and seeing this up here. But what I also like about it is like there is a boat launch right here. The river runs north to south. So it's real hard to take a boat up to that. Um, maybe these little trails right here. Yeah, it looks like they kind of go back in there, but still you can't drive that. So if you want a straight line distance, it's probably the best thing to do is from the, uh, the boat launch there. That's going to be eight tenths of a mile straight line. And you got to definitely make some curves to get around the river. So it's still pretty far back in there too. I think just a neat spot to go and set up maybe commit a whole day bring you some snacks hope you got some cell phone service or bring a book you know mm -hmm. and, and go in there and hang because you know sooner or later a deer's going to walk by that place yeah for sure man i like it a lot so these are a couple of spots that you might go check out if you're ever in the area and let us know what you think uh preferably in the comments below yeah also you can subscribe to this channel and see we've got one more i believe of these videos that's going to come out but uh throughout the season you're going to see a lot of uh, cool content of us putting our map scout practice to use um, and on actual live targets hopefully <laughs> so um, it's gonna be fun I hope that you do subscribe thank you so much for the support uh, make sure you go go support the companies that have supported this map scout challenge which are on X and Exodus big thanks to them and remember this is your element live in it mm -hmm.